Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a Radeon Fire Pro W5000 graphics card and it's intended for workstation purposes. Now I picked this one up on eBay for 40 British pounds because I was curious as to whether or not we could game on one of these. After all, you can install the Radeon drivers as usual on any PC you like and after doing so I noticed that unlike a more modern Radeon Pro GPU, the likes of which we tested about a year or so ago now, there isn't the option to switch between professional and gaming drivers. Though, having said that, there was really no difference when doing so using that aforementioned WX2100 that we've tested out beforehand. This is a slightly older workstation GPU, and interestingly, Tech Power Up say that this is pretty close on paper to a GT1030 in terms of performance, or at least that's what I could gather from this little graph here. And to be honest, I find that quite hard to believe. Well, at first, in all honesty, I didn't, um, but as I got into today's tests, I found that the performance wasn't quite like the GT1030 at all. So should you buy one of these to use as an everyday gaming GPU? And is it any good? Well, first, let's take a look at the card itself. It's small, it's quiet, and it only takes up a single slot in your system. And best of all, it requires no external power cable in order to function. Pretty great start, especially if you're looking to upgrade a system that doesn't really have a powerful PSU. Now, I mentioned before that when installing the drivers, you don't have the option to switch between gaming or workstation drivers. But what you do have here is AMD's excellent Relive Capture software, and it's the software I use to capture all of today's gameplay videos. Now, the reason I use onboard software such as this in Shadowplay is because I find that they have no effect on frame rate whatsoever, and they're pretty good pieces of recording software. For example, you can see here as we get into the games that it really does do quite a good quality job of recording all of the necessary footage. So Let's talk about how it performed when running modern titles. Now I actually went into this expecting pretty decent results, but immediately as I started off with some easier to run games, it's safe to say I was disappointed. Now Assassin's Creed 3 is an old title, but recently it's been remastered and had a little bit of a graphics overhaul. Performance here wasn't really very good, we were hovering around 30 frames per second on average, and even so we were only using the normal in-game settings with anti-aliasing on. Now I left anti-aliasing on because if you turn it off it looks quite bad and the performance difference was negligible. In fact even when I switched things to high there really wasn't much of a performance drop to be honest um, and this sort of gave us the more stable frame rate overall but as I say you could probably put things on high here and not have a significantly negative effect on performance in Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. After seeing this first result, I decided to target 1080p 30fps because 60 frames per second was out of the question in most regards. But I have to remind you that this is in fact a workstation GPU and was never intended for gaming in the first place. This is just one of those situations where my curiosity got the better of me. Unlike Assassin's Creed 3, however, Crisis, the original 2007 release, fared pretty well on this graphics card. We were running the game at 1080p high and averaged close to 60 frames per second, although we did have anti-aliasing switched off because it had quite a negative effect on the frame rate here and didn't really make the game look that much better, if I'm honest. Crisis, as you know, is one of those demanding titles that always gives old or brand new hardware a run for its money and here I think the performance was okay but expect a few frame drops as the action starts to heat up. It is still a fantastic looking title though and definitely one you should check out if you haven't played it before. The store is not that great but it does give your hardware a good test. Speaking of demanding games, Metro Exodus was next up. Here we used the low preset at 1080p and ran the in-game benchmark test and the performance wasn't very good at all. We were averaging nowhere near 30 frames per second. I could have turned the resolution scaling down a little bit and in fact I did try this briefly but it made no real difference to the frame rate here and just made the game look a lot worse. Just like Crisis Metro will give 
new graphics cards a good run for their money and it's an ideal one to purchase if you want to test out some hardware. However, the game won't run all that well on the W5000 Workstation GPU. It's a similar story with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p low. I played through one of the high score runs um, during a little tomb level here and I have to say that we didn't really come close to seeing a suitable average. It hovered near 30 but couldn't quite touch it. We didn't use very low um, because again there wasn't much of a performance difference and the game did look quite a bit worse in my opinion but I think whatever you do Shadow of the Tomb Raider isn't going to be playable on a card like this which is unfortunate but it's just not going to happen. In The Witcher 3 we did see a plus 30 FPS average but we had to turn things down to low again. Um, the post-processing settings were set to low as well as the graphics settings with nothing else added or taken away. This is just the standard preset options at full HD resolution here. As you can see we're having a little bit of a walk around town and the frame rate didn't drop too much but bear in mind that when you get into some more combat intensive scenes expect the FPS to go into the low 20s in some instances, which can turn this game from playable to unplayable in a mere instance. Watch Dogs 2 actually defaulted to medium, so I decided to leave things there, and we did see at least 30 frames per second on average. As always with Watch Dogs 2, the first 30 seconds or so will be very jittery, there will be a lot of stutters, but the game sort of irons itself out the more you play it, which is quite odd, but that's just what happens. 1080p medium here, as I say, was okay. You could probably do with turning things down to low on a card like this if you wanted to see a more solid and constant 30 FPS plus. But with the medium settings, you get a nice balance between performance and graphical fidelity. The open world of San Francisco still looks great and is very fun to explore. Now, although it was on the low preset here, Battlefield 5 actually surprised me quite a bit because it seems to run quite well. I've actually found this one to be quite well optimised when I've tested a few different GPUs out, but this does seem to be more processor intensive, so that's probably why we were seeing an okay result here. Around 35 frames per second was the average. As with all of today's games, this will drop as the scene becomes more intensive. You get a few explosions, more enemies running at you, things like that. But overall, it held pretty steady. This is the second part of the French level, and of course all in-game levels will differ. But I think you're going to see a fairly stable FPS throughout. Fortnite next, and what on earth has happened here? It's been a long while since I've played this game. Anyway, regarding the performance, 1080p medium here, and the game ran pretty well with about 40 to 50 frames per second. If you want to turn things down to low, then obviously you'd see a few more frames here and there. Interestingly enough, when I put this game on full screen, we had some weird colour artefacts. I'm not sure if that's a sign of the card going bad. I don't think so. I think it was just a graphical glitch at this time because it seems to have been okay during the rest of today's tests. But I had to play this on windowed borderless, which was odd. I'm not sure if that's going to be the same with all W5000 cards, but I thought I'd report it anyway, considering it's something that I picked up on. In Fallout 76, it should also be possible to attain at least 30 frames per second on low with 1080p resolution as with throughout. I was uh, running around engaging in some combat here, and even so, the frame rate stayed pretty steady, so Fallout is again more than playable on this card if 30 FPS is okay for you. If you wanted closer to 60, then you'd probably be looking at dropping the resolution down to 720p, although I don't think you're going to maintain a solid 60 frames per second in this title. And as I said before, that was the reason why we were targeting 30 throughout. And finally, it's Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, a game that has really improved performance-wise over the couple of years or so that it's been out. Here on the W5000 Workstation GPU, it ran pretty well, and that's all there is to really say. The W5000 does an okay job in some games, but more often than not, you will see some pretty heavy frame dips, and this card is certainly not cut out for gaming purposes, but then again, it was never designed for such. It is, however, a decent option to add to, say, a system that has a pretty bad power supply or no external cable to attach to a GPU. It's very small, it's very quiet, and in some cases it can be found quite cheap, though you are certainly better off buying an entry-level desktop card. 
But nonetheless, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one.